Welcome to the 19 video in the Just In Case series, um, sponsored by Quality Equality OT consultancy firm based in Oxford, United Kingdom. And my name is Mayan Chung Judge, and I'm the founder and director of the firm. We chose this name just in case. It's just in case that you need reminding of something, just in case you did not know, just in case you want to refresh your memory, and just in case you want to know a topic better. And today I'm very pleased to say that we are joined by Dr. John Scherer, a very highly respected, well-known international speaker, consultant and change facilitator who has worked with leaders and organizations all over the world. In fact, uh, John did a count recently is minimum 52 country. He's a global citizen. He work across different sectors across various OD projects, but his love is really about leadership development within OD. He, he, he has a famous quote that we need to see LD within the OD frame, and that's the way to see it. And John has actually published hundreds of articles and video program in the field of leadership development, conflict resolution, and high engagement performance improvement methodology. And um, not only his book on five questions that change everything is being awarded as the possibly the best business self-help book ever written. His other book that are coming out now would excel even that. John is a proud father of four. He lives and works out of a base in Warsaw, Poland. He plays the guitar and does the occasional magic show. He is full of fun and vitality, and it is that energy he always bring to work with his client, particularly the leadership community. And you will love listening to John, and he will be uh, offering um, a fundamental, a foundational understanding of leadership development and how we as OD practitioner can approach supporting our clients to look at our practice. So over to you, John, and thank you for investing your time. And please sit back and enjoy John's video. Thank you, Mian. This is so great. I, I, I appreciate very much being invited to be in this series. I mean, boy, when I, I look and see who you've got here, it's, it, it really is a, it's an honor to be uh, in, 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 this, in this list. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much. So you've asked me to talk about leadership development in organization development. And I, of course, that's something I've been doing for you know, 30, 40, 50 years now. I don't even want to think about how long. But one thing before we get started, I'm aware of sitting here and my hair, I, in this lockdown now, I'm, we're like four months into this lockdown. And, and the thing about Zoom and Skype and all that is that I've realized I've never seen myself so often while I was doing something. So, you know, when you're leading a group or something, you don't see your own face. But when, you, when, you're, <laughs> when you're doing it now in lockdown, you see your own face. I'm seeing my own face all the time. And I've watched my hair get longer and longer. And, and the other day I realized I haven't had this much hair since my hippie days in the 1970s, you know. So anyway, I hope, it's, I hope everybody can kind of get around that. So let's, let's, let's talk about leadership development in organization development. Because these are actually, uh, sometimes they don't go together. And I think it's because people approach leadership development as if it's about the individual man or woman who is the focus of the work. And coaching, lots of coaching uh, is happening in organizations, but sometimes it happens in a way that there's no impact on the organization itself. So if you're going to do coaching or leadership development of any kind, there are certain things that you can do to help the work that you do with individuals actually have some system impact. And I hope I get a, get a chance to talk about that a little bit today. So here we go. Um, you know the classic formula, our brother Kurt Levine, by the way, I'm, I'm speaking to you from Warsaw, Poland. And uh, he was born in Poland. People don't know that. They think he was German. But he and his family um, uh, migrated, left uh, uh, Western Poland, moved into Germany to teach. And then when Hitler came to power, they left, came to America, thank goodness. And, and that's, how we, that's how we got him. 
one of his classic formulas is that th B, the behavior of an individual person is a function of that it, it varies as relations to the person themselves, their personality, their style, all the stuff that you know we work on with people, interacting with, that's the comma, interacting with their environment. So for instance, a athletes, you can see this with ath athletes or musicians. You can take a, a mediocre athlete, put them on a really great team with a great coach, and that environment will multiply their effectiveness. Or you can take a great player and put them on a team that isn't doing very well, that, that where the environment's not good, and they, can't, they, 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 they just can't play at all. And so good leadership development in an, in an OD context is going to pay attention to both the individual that's in the program and their context and the environment. So that's, going to, that's sort of a fundamental principle. Behavior is a function of the person, I would say multiplied by their environment. Now, I, just a quick thing about OD with, with action research is kind of the key because that'll be the context for a lot of this. Uh, this has been, this is my kind of working definition of, of, of action research, which is the heart of, as you know, of OD. Finding out what is actually happening and why it's happening um, from and with all the stakeholders that you can possibly get involved. That's the research part of the, you know, Kurt said, no action without research, no research without action. So this is the research part. And then getting all that data on the table, so to speak, out in the open, where it can be discussed, interpreted in a safe environment by those involved, not by a small group of consultants or the executive team or HR or whoever, but by those involved, at least representatives of those people, who have been empowered to act, that has the power to change the people, the situation, and the system, and that's the action. So this is my working definition. This is kind of my fundamental OD concept is as much as I possibly can. From the minute, from the first phone call, I'm, 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 I'm working on how do we get, as soon as I know who it is that's the focus of the activity, how can we get them involved? Now, from my point of view, as you'll see as we go forward, that's leader, we're beginning to do leadership development right after the first phone call, sometimes on the first phone call based on the questions that I'm asking the person who's been, who's been calling. And you'll, you'll see what I mean by that in just a minute. What does it mean to be developing leadership? Leadership development is a key word. It's not training. Uh, my, the, the program, the, the leadership development intensive that I've been doing for quite a while, you'll hear some more about that in, in a minute. I didn't call it leadership training. Training uh, adds something to the person who's already there. It's like you, you teach an animal or a person to do certain things. But when you develop, it means something else. I love this. When I stumbled across this, my daughter is a singer, dancer, actress in Paris, France. Of course, lived there for a number of years. And when I heard this, I got so, I, w I wished I'd known it 30, 40 years ago. To develop, it comes from the old French word développer, développer, which means to unwrap. You, at Christmas or Hanukkah, whatever your celebrations are, your birthday, you develop your gifts. You open them up to see what's inside. Isn't that fabulous? It's like you are discovering. To, to develop is to discover. Like when you take a photograph in the old days, when you took a photograph to be developed, you didn't see anything on it. Then you put it in the chemicals, and suddenly the images emerge. So when you're developing leadership, you're not, you're not telling people, teaching people techniques. You're helping them develop something inside themselves. They are unfolding in some way. I love this. To ripen, to expand, to evolve, to expose. So in a, as soon as I got this, I realized that starting in 1987, when I did the first version of this program, I somehow stumbled across this, this basic principle to not call it training, but to call it development. Now, this is a really, really key point here. Um, it's the difference between leadership and authority. Now, I spent four years on a U.S. Navy destroyer, right? I was a combat officer on that destroyer. Um, and so if I had, you know, we, everybody had rank. And it, I had one of these <laughs> and a name tag. And if somebody with two of these told me what to do, I said, aye, aye, sir, in those days, sir. 
And if I had this and they didn't, they said, I, I, sir, to me. That's authority. That's rank. Leadership is something different. And it's very important to understand that distinction. And a lot of leadership development um, experiences, I think, don't understand this concept here. I got it from my friend Hugh O'Doherty, who's at the Harvard uh, School of Business, and he got it from his, his buddy, uh, Ron Heifetz. So this is back to those two guys here. But I love it. What kind of situation do you have? What's the, how clear is the problem? How clear is the solution? And therefore, what is needed here? And you have two different levels. If it's a technical problem, this means that the, that the problem itself is understood. You've seen it before. You know what the solution is. It's available and it's proven. You know what it is and it's right here. So what do you need? You just need somebody who has enough rank to say, do it, make it happen, command authority. Just like in the military, right full rudder. How many times have I said that? Right full rudder, all ahead two thirds. Aye, aye, sir. It's like, and there's no conversation, just, just do it. Okay, we'll talk about it later. Now, that's when you have a technical problem. But there's a waterline here. I don't think the guys in Harvard draw it this way, but this is how I draw it because I have this thing about the waterline. And below the waterline, you have different kinds of situations. Below the waterline, you can have complex challenges or what some OD people understand are wicked problems. Doesn't mean they're bad problems. It just means they have multiple causality, they have a long history, they have stakeholder you know, interference, you have all these things that make it very difficult to do. In that case, the problem itself is not clear. Like what about racism? You know, what, about, uh, what, about the, what about homelessness? You know, what about a culture in an organization? What, what's, what's the problem? Who knows? Or it's very complex. And therefore, some learning is required, okay? Not authority, not command authority, but learning. What about the solution? Not clear. When, I mean, we're not sure exactly what to do. If you, you know, I get called in to do organizational culture change, and quite often they tell me what they want me to do. And I go, hey, if that worked, you wouldn't be, why are we talking? If this is, ha you know, if, if you know what to do, get off the phone, you know, what are we doing here? Because what's needed in this case is not the use of authority, but what they call adaptive leadership. Leadership that helps the system adapt to the situation, which means the leader, the, the, the person who is, who is in this process exerting leadership needs to be able to adapt, surrender their positions, listen deeply to other people, deal with polarities, not get stuck. And this means facilitating discovery and decisions with multiple stakeholders. That's leadership. Above the waterline, you've got management or you have expert, which is absolutely crucial. Um, one, of, one of my clients here in, in Poland, um, U2I is a, a, a technology firm in uh, Krakow, a very, very innovative firm, amazing people. I've been working with them for like seven or eight years. And they just were selected in the, in the top five technology firms in Poland. And when they get interviewed, uh, you know, what, what's different about you? This is so cool. That's why I'm saying I'm so proud. They mentioned the work that my colleague Amy Barnes and I did with them. So what we were teaching them was this kind of stuff. Because as long as you're writing code, you're up above the waterline. You just need to know what you're doing and you just do it. But as soon as you have to relate to the customer or as soon as there's an issue or there's some problem enters the system, whenever learning suddenly becomes uh, necessary, now leadership is needed and not just command authority. And this is a very important principle when it comes to leadership development, especially if you're inside of a system and you're in an OD environment. How can you possibly help the organization to develop if you're working with people who exert their leadership from a command authority point of view? It just, it can't work. In fact, OD is in fact the inverse of that. So there's a lot of work to be done in, a, in an OD project to convince leadership that they need to adapt, practice, start practicing adaptive leadership and, and, and be ready to let go. And that's a major part of, of, of the work that I end up doing with our clients. So what about this? Um, leadership is not a title. It's something that happens between people. Leadership is something you'd see on a video or it's in your calendar. It's not, on, it's not in an org chart. It's a very, very key distinction. 
your name is in a box up on the up on the org chart. Great, congratulations. And depending on your altitude, you know, n minus one, minus two, minus whatever, you have certain rank, just like in the military, and you have a title, and your title's in a box, which gives you the right to tell the people in a in a box below what to do. Well, congratulations, you've got command authority, but you don't have leadership yet. Because leadership doesn't happen until you're interacting with at least one other human being. Leadership is influencing, as you'll see in a second. To lead comes from the, the Middle English word leiden, <clears throat> leiden. <clears throat> I think the German has that same word for leader, which means to serve as a channel for, to guide the flow of something. Like the river banks lead the river. So just like the conductor is the only person in the orchestra that never makes a sound, the leader isn't doing so much as guiding the flow, and the energy is coming from the people, and leadership is guiding the flow of something. So you can't be, you can't be a leader sitting, but you're not a leader when you're sitting in your office. You have a title, congratulations. Just sit there and have your title. The minute you start interacting with people, your job is to help create a different kind of future. That's leadership. Now you're starting to work with people. Now you're beginning to guide the flow of something. So how do you work with men and women to help them develop their capacity, discover in themselves the capacity to guide the flow of the energy that comes from other people? That's what I've been, that's my work for, I don't know, like I said, for a long time. So this, this is kind of a, a, a way that I've shortcut this whole thing. I think what's needed now, and this is kind of a theme for us in our work now here in uh, Eastern Central Europe, Central Eastern Europe, is to work on courage plus authenticity if you want to have leadership impact uh, as a way of getting away from command authority. It doesn't take a lot of courage <laughs> to say rightful, if you're just telling people what to do, it doesn't take a lot of courage. Now, you might get scared because you're afraid of being wrong, but that's a different thing. There's not a lot of unknown when you're in a, when you're in a command authority situation. And authenticity, who cares? Like, when I was officer of the deck and I was in control of the ship, I don't, that guy didn't care how he felt about me. In that moment, I was giving him orders, and he said, aye, aye, sir, and he did it, even, I mean, unless it was wrong, and then he would push back a little bit. But this courage and authenticity are only necessary if you're in a leadership situation. And here's why. <clears throat> These are, I'm going to tell you now, this is, this is, this is the way we do it, okay? It's, it's <clears throat> my book is called Five Questions That Change Everything. The new version is called something else. I'll tell you in a second. So these are five questions that change everything except the one thing that never needs to change. You don't need to change yourself. You need to come home to yourself. And this changes everything. So it's a lot of leadership efforts, you know, be like Steve Jobs or be like Gandhi or be like some really amazing person, you know. And I'm saying, no, that, that would be weird. You got to be like yourself. <laughs> There's a great T-shirt might as well be myself, everyone else is taken. I love that t-shirt. Um, and so you don't need to change into somebody else. A lot of leadership development people think they need to go. Weight loss programs. You need to, you need to come home to that person inside of you that knows what, their, what your weight needs to be and then be that person. You, know, you don't need to change yourself. You need to come home to yourself. This changes everything. And this is the, the, the secret of our uh, leadership development work. And these are the five questions. Question number one. <clears throat> what confronts me? And we use the metaphor of the tiger, as you'll see in a second. Uh, if you're in the, in the jungle, and if a tiger comes up on somebody, the, 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 the human instinct immediately is to turn and run. And of course, you know that if you turn and run, you are history. The tiger cannot stop itself. If you pull a string in front of a cat, you know, five times, it'll try to get the string five times out of five. It is hardwired. But the people who live there say, so if you run, your chances are zero. But they say, if you turn and face the tiger, now he may still eat you. This is not a magic story here. But he'll stop and think about it, or she. They'll stop and think about it. 
So the act of facing a tiger creates not a guarantee, but a chance of a different outcome. So leadership involves being, having the courage to turn and face a situation without knowing exactly what needs to happen. And the simple act of facing it creates a chance that something needed might happen. If you're not facing it, <laughs> forget it. It's up to chance, okay? Leadership is not about chance. Second question, okay, I'm turning and facing this tiger. What am I bringing to that encounter? What's my history with this kind of problem or situation or person? Uh, what are my hopes? What are my fears? What are my pr what, what's the conversation I'm having inside about this situation that makes it a tiger? Now, the reason starting with a tiger is so powerful in leadership development is as soon as I tell you I have a tiger, I'm telling you that what I normally do isn't working. My defaults are not working. I'm not going to be able to handle this situation by doing the stuff I always do. So right away, acknowledging a tiger puts me in a développé, a development environment where I'm going to have to go deeper in that well. Educare, educate, go deeper into that well and draw out something I didn't know was there. That's why the tiger is so important. And then the third question, what's been running me? How have I been automa on automatic, like a, like a hamster running in the wheel without realizing it? How am I on automatic? Like, what is it that I've been doing that hasn't been working? And we do a whole lot of stuff about the shadow and so on, but that's not important in this context. And then the fourth question is, well, if that's not working, what calls me? What gifts, what charisms do I have inside of me coming home to myself? What do I discover? What strengths, what capabilities, what, what underdeveloped strengths do I have? Like when we, we, we work on the shadow, what is it that I didn't want to be that's so important? I, there was a woman in this, in this workshop the other day. We have people select a shadow character, and her shadow character was a Catherine the Great from Russia. And I said, really, a shadow? Like somebody I'd never want to be. And I said, why would you not want to be her? What was it about her that was so bad? She said, oh, she was so cruel. She was cruel. So I said... I'm going to bet that you're missing opportunities and moments uh, where you probably need to be more assertive about, about your, and, and, she, and she went, like, like I was some mind reader or something like that, you know. So w once you see what's been running you and you realize what has not been available to you because of that shadow material, then you can bring all of that to what calls you. What charisms do you have that call out to be expressed in this situation. Like all my kids are artists. My older son's a rock musician. My middle son is a hip hop rapper. My younger son plays piano and trombone, classical jazz. He's a, he's a math teacher, that's his, that's his day job. And my daughter's a singer, dancer, actress. So they're all in the arts. They're called. The artist feels something moving in them. And then it comes up and it's expressed into the world. And that's the second thing is what calls you from outside? <clears throat> What's the difference in the world? It's not about whose logo is on the paycheck. It's not about what job you have. It's about what, you know, like when in, in, in a small town when there's no fire department and the siren goes off, everybody in town hears the siren, but only a few people hear it as a call. So what it, with all the noise in the world, what are those situations that you're naturally drawn to that you notice that you, that you, that you want to move toward? And then the last question is, okay, got that, got the T-shirt, now what? How will I unleash myself how can I turn myself loose in the world? <clears throat> we use the metaphor of the river that's raging inside of most people. But by the time what they're saying and doing goes through all the gates, what comes out is this little trickle. <clears throat> so we want to unleash, unleash that river <clears throat> of, of potential that's in you. Courage. Here we are, facing the tiger. So like I said, face the tiger. Create a chance for yourself. If you're a team leader or a member of the team. See, leadership happens... Every, oh, <clears throat> years ago, <clears throat> years ago, um, we, we start every uh, one of our leadership programs, like this 12, 12 people in the room or so, go around, hello, I'm so-and-so, and this is why I'm here. And this woman said, hello, my name is so-and-so, and I'm just a secretary. And everybody in the room went, what? You know, and she said, yeah, I'm, I'm just a secretary. And I said, can, let's, can you try that again? She said, hello, my name is so-and-so, and I'm just a secretary. And I said, okay, let's come back to this on Saturday, and I want to see how you'd answer the question. Well, 
about two weeks later, I get a phone call from the CEO of her company. She was the secretary to the CEO of this huge energy company in, in the West of America. I get this call from the CEO. <clears throat> he says, I understand that you're a change facilitator. We have a major issue here. Can you come and facilitate this change project? And I said, okay, let's keep talking. Uh, by the way, how did you find out about me? He said, oh, well, so-and-so told me about you. And he mentioned his secretary. So, so we did this huge change project for this thing, went on for almost a year. And one time I'm sitting talking to him in his office and he says, John, I'm so sorry, I've got to get up. Shauna has called a meeting. Her name is Shauna. And, and I said, but you're the CEO, why do you? He said, John, I would never miss a meeting that Shauna called. And I said, can you tell me why? And he said, something really good always happens to me and this company when Shauna calls a meeting. Now, if that isn't leadership, I don't know what is. So leadership is not a title. It's an attitude, and it's, a, it's what you do, what happens between you and other people. She went back and faced the tiger. Authenticity, I love this. <clears throat> it's from the Greek, authentikos. Uh, auto, self, automobile, automatic, and thentikos, which means the place of origin. Where did you come from? So this is originating from the self. If something is authentic, it means its origins are in you. So a really great leadership question is, who is authoring what's happening right now in my behavior? You know, what is the source of what is happening now in me? Where is it coming from? That's authenticity is, what's the source? Where, where, where is what's happening originating, inside or outside? And this is how work is planned. We go from A to B, this is how it's managed. We have objectives, charts, timelines, tra tracking systems, and so forth. This is often called the hard stuff of the workplace. It's what you could see on a slide, okay? Now, this is the way things actually happen. You have a water line, and above the water line, you have people trying to follow the plan. Below the water line, you got this. You go, as soon as you hand your budget off to human beings, it goes from the Newtonian world of predictability into the quantum field, where all you have is unknown and probability. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. This is the human world below the waterline. Up here is the hard stuff. Down here, this is often called the soft stuff. We go, no, this is not the soft stuff. This is the harder stuff. Leadership, as from our, my good colleague, Lynn Skotnitsky, leadership happens here. <clears throat> so you've got to learn to be comfortable in the water, my friend, if you're going to practice leadership, okay? So we go back to this to summarize again. Uh, you've got what kind of situation it is. What, you know, right now, do I, do I exercise authority? Absolutely. If I'm on the bridge and we have a crisis, I'm not going to say, hey, let's have a meeting here. Let's all get together. And if I say right full rudder, that helmsman is not going to say, well, I don't know. What do you all think? Mr. Sheriff says we should do right. No, there's, 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 there's stuff to do. You just do it. But in every other kind of situation, you do have to exercise those kind of facilitating learning, learning and discovery. <clears throat> and here's, here's, a, here's a concept. Uh, some years ago, um, I started taking business people into the, into the bush to work with the Maasai uh, warriors. And this is one of the warriors. And I traded him uh, my wristwatch and my uh, leatherman tool and my binoculars for the spear and, the, and that shield. And a couple days later, I went to my friend Kakuta, who's one of the Maasai warriors who also lives in Seattle, comes back and forth. And I said, Kakuta, I'm, I have a problem. He said, brother, what is it? I said, no, no, it's okay. I just, I traded Kabole, my, my wristwatch, and I can't tell what time it is. He said, well, here, take this. And I said, oh, it's beautiful. What is it? He said, this is a Maasai wristwatch. Now, I'm an Eagle Scout, so I see that little ring there, and I figure you put a toothpick on it. <laughs> and hold it up to the sun or something. <laughs> and I said, well, how does it work? And he pointed to it. He said, look, it's time to be doing exactly what we're doing right now. And I just got it. I mean, here I am 10 years later telling you this story. It's like, are you kidding? What a fabulous thing. This is a different kind of time. The, 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 the wristwatch gives you clock time, chronos. This other kind of time, which is kairos. What is it time for now? Okay, it is now, uh, whatever time it is, let me see, it is now five minutes to six. Where am I supposed to be in this presentation at five minutes to six? That's one kind of time. The other kind of time is, what is it right now time for? 
What is needed right now? What does this situation need from me? What is it that I need to do right now? What is it time for now? That's leadership. Clock time is management. You better know how to do that. But if you, if you only know how to tell clock time and you can't tell what is it time for now, you're in trouble. So let me wrap it up this way. <clears throat> what is it time for now? You know, courage plus authenticity equals true impact. So the, the question you need to ask yourself is, how do we develop leadership in this time, in this place, in this context? So we're working with the P, the person, interacting with his or her E environment. When you do leadership development and you, and you practice these principles of also working with, because leadership doesn't, somebody sitting in a chair, it's like termites, I remember. This biologist said one time, you want to learn about termites, you can't study a termite. You study a termite, you don't know anything about termites. You learn about what they, but put 10 or 15 of them together, now you know what a termite is. As soon as that 15th termite arrives, they start building a cathedral inside the piece of wood. So it's like leadership cannot be developed with somebody sitting in a chair. You have to work with them in their context. That's the best kind of leadership develop that you can possibly do. Well, I think that's it, Mian. I hope this is what you had in mind. I just love doing it. I hope, I hope it gets out to people and that, uh, and, that, and that they find it useful. Thank you. Thank you so much. On behalf of everyone, thank you, John, for that elegant explanation of what leadership development within the OD frame is. The part that really sit with me is when you unpack the word development which is to unwrap, discover, unfold. It gives me such a wonderful imagery about the work that we do among our client. And I am grateful for you taking the time to share. And if any one of you like to continue the conversation with John, John is incredibly accessible and friendly, and all his information and his resources are at the end of the video. So do contact him. Um, I just want to say that um, John will be doing another video for us, so we will be uh, featuring him again. So thank you, John, for your effort. And um, for the rest of you, viewer, may I wish you a time to stay safe, stay well, and also continue to bring humanity back to the workplace.